let's get started going through these irregularities. So this should give you a lot more information on this slide um, than the last. So let's talk about horizontal irregularity type one. So one A and one B, this irregularity occurs when the maximum story drift, so I've highlighted drift here, so your maximum story drift to your average story drift. Oops, I didn't mean to draw that. Um, the maximum to average, so is greater than 1.2. So you would look here and say your delta R is your maximum, and then your average is going to be the average between delta R and delta L. So that's just right and left. Um, and then if that ratio is greater than 1.2, you would have a type 1A. If it's greater than 1.4, um, that's a significant issue, and you would have an extreme torsional irregularity. And keep in mind that this is for rigid diaphragms only. So if you have a wood frame building, this does not apply. Um, I would just, if you are taking notes on this, I would say note that it's rigid. Don't note that it's just not applicable to wood frame because there's more, there's more to it than just wood frame or not wood frame. So the definition is really rigid. And then and by the time we're done with our um, discussion this afternoon, you'll have a better understanding of rigid versus flexible diaphragms. Um, okay, so when the ratio of maximum story drift to average story drift exceeds the given limit, there is the potential for an unbalance in the elastic deformation demands at the two extreme sides of a story. So that's what we were talking about. If you have this offset, you have this rotation, the loads in this wall are going to be dramatically higher than the loads in the wall on the right. And you don't want to have that, um, I guess that's the opposite of how this is drawn. So if we have it going clockwise, the loads over here will be much greater and you'll see greater deflection. And you don't want to see that in your building. It'll just place a lot of um, stress in the walls and in the floor system. Okay. Um, as a consequence for this irregularity, the equivalent stiffness of the side having the maximum deformation will be reduced and the eccentricity between the centers of mass and rigidity will be increased along with the corresponding torsions. So it basically just, the behavior that occurs when you have this irregularity is an amplification of the problem. So the problem is that your center of mass and your center of rigidity are so separate, but through this torsion, it actually is going to make them separate. Well, I guess your center of mass always stays the same, but it's going to make them separate more due to the forces that are induced by that configuration. Um, and there's an, ampli an amplification factor that um, is applied to represent the effects of this unbalanced stiffness. So the amplification factor is AX. It's in ASC 7, um, I think it's in 12.8.4.3. Um, again, we will talk about that factor when we talk about rigid diaphragms. Um, but that's all part of this horizontal irregularity, number one. 